The American people deserve a health care system that takes care of them, not one that taxes and takes advantage of our patients and our consumers and our citizens. These reforms are just the beginning. In the coming weeks, we will work with Congress to pass legislation that will save Americans even more money at the pharmacy. For that, we need the help of Congress, and we think it will be forthcoming. That was President Trump in the Rose Garden at the White House earlier today on this beautiful day in Washington, D.C., this beautiful Friday. We welcome you back to another big hour of Benson and Harf. I'm Guy Benson. Marie is not with us today. She is facing a family health emergency, and we are just thinking of her and praying for her extended family. We alluded to it on the program yesterday, and she just couldn't be here today, but we will be back together on Monday. So we heard the president there talking about prescription drug costs and health care generally. And joining us on the program now is a senator from Louisiana, U.S. Senator Bill Cassidy, who has been following these issues very closely as a member of the United States Senate. And it is very good to have you here, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. I am so glad to be with you. Well, that's kind of you to say. So let's jump into what the president announced today at the White House. What are your initial reactions to what President Trump proposed? And do you think, as he said at the end of the clip that we played, Congress will be willing to play ball on these proposals? A couple things. I'm very excited. What he has talked about will lower drug costs almost as soon as some of the provisions are implemented, and then through different mechanisms, lower drug costs uh, over the next several years. Uh, it's going to be a huge restructuring of how some people do business, but that restructuring will benefit the American consumer. Whether Congress can do it, I don't know. Democrats do not want to give President Trump a win. For example, we just tried to lower health insurance costs by about 20 to 40 percent, and Patty Murray of Washington voted against a bill which was called Alexander Murray, and Bill Nelson of Florida voted against a bill which was called Collins Nelson. Uh, and those bills went down, and now premiums will go up. So whether we can do it, I don't know, but I'm going to do my best. Well, c can you explain, because I had other questions, but let's go back to what you just mentioned why is it that you have Democratic senators voting against bills that they have co-sponsored? Because they think that health care costs are going to go up, that it's going to be blamed on Republicans, and that they're going to be able to win in November because the voter will blame Republicans for higher health care costs, even though they're voting against legislation that would lower insurance premiums. Oh, that has their names on it in those two cases. That's... I mean, if that is exactly what they're doing, that, that is sort of bottom of the barrel cynicism, although not necessarily surprising because this is Washington, D.C. Uh, Senator Cassidy, I want to ask you, I, when it comes to the president's proposals here, I understand why this is politically uh, sort of attractive, right? Because I'm reading a story in The Wall Street Journal today, vast majorities of voters on both sides of the aisle say that they would be more likely to vote for a congressional candidate who supports lowering prescription drug costs. 66 percent of Republicans, 78 percent of Democrats. That's sort of a no-brainer. People understand that these prices keep climbing. It's not necessarily a sexy political issue, but it's one that affects every American's pocketbooks, especially senior citizens. And the growth rate, according to the Wall Street Journal and a study from CMS, show that the growth rate of prescription drug costs and spending went up from 2.9 percent last year to 6.6 percent so far this year. So the the appeal behind this and the push here makes sense to me politically and on a policy basis. My question is, and I guess my concern is, is this a free market way that the president is suggesting that this problem gets ameliorated or resolved because when we start talking about heavy handed government intrusion, that worries me. You're a free market guy. You're also a medical doctor. Should conservatives be OK with what the White House has put out? From what I've seen, absolutely. The president is trying to restore 
free market principles. Let me give you one example. Currently, the insurance companies that manage drug costs or the middlemen that do called pharmacy benefit managers will go to a pharmacist and say to the pharmacist, look, the patient may do better financially paying you cash instead of buying their insurance and paying their deductible, uh, paying their copay. If you tell the patient that, you lose your contract. You lose your contract. So if you tell the patient she's going to save money by paying cash, you will no longer do business with you. That is not free market. That is, that, I don't know, it's something like extortion. What's happening is that middleman will take the extra money the patient has to put up. So she pays 50 bucks, she would have paid 25. They take that extra $25, put it in their pocket to their profit margin. That's wrong. This legislation, according to the president, will stop that. It'll benefit the patient, and it's a restoration of free market. Well, and I'm, I'm totally for price transparency, which is what you're talking about here. You've also been hammering on the issue of something called pharmacy gag clauses, which goes to this very question of price opacity uh, at the pharmaceutical companies, hospitals, and providers. Can you talk about that and why that is a significant contributor to the costs that escalate? That's what I just described. They will tell the, the pharmacist, uh, they will put a gag in the pharmacist so that the pharmacist cannot be the patient's advocate, cannot tell the patient where she gets the best price. But right. it goes even beyond that. Uh, we would like to have price transparency so that if there's a medicine that at one pharmacy costs 70, it costs 40, the patient would know. Now, that sounds like an extreme example, can't be true. There was a recent report in which the cost of a given medicine ranged from 44 to over $700, depending on which pharmacy you went to. We need to move beyond just getting rid of orders to allowing the patient to know the actual price in this pharmacy versus another pharmacy for the medicine which she seeks to purchase. Another question that I have, and you're an expert on these matters, I'm not, but one of the questions and one of the issues at least that people are raising is allowing generic drugs to have greater access to the market so that people aren't forced to pay a premium for a name brand drug. They can get a pill or a prescription that does exactly the same thing health-wise but costs a fraction of the price. And again, that seems like a sensible path to try to go down here. The, the trade-off, though, that at least worries me a little bit is the name brand and developing breakthroughs requires an enormous amount of cost to drug companies to develop, research and development costs, right? And so if you allow generic drugs to flood the market within a certain time period, you could – discourage or disincentivize robust research and development that makes our system, our medical system, the most innovative in the world. How do you strike that balance as a policymaker? So the president, I agree with you, it must be struck. The president is not limiting patent protection. So if somebody develops a drug, brings it to market, they will still get their seven or 12 years of exclusivity to sell. It's, but what he's also said is that uh, the pharmaceutical companies cannot use various legal tricks to prolong that patent exclusivity, uh, and so and so because doing that you've re you've returned you've recouped all your money for investment. Uh, but so now you're you know just just extending the life of the drug. Uh, some folks use legal legal mechanisms, but are merely manipulating the laws so that they can extend it beyond the uh, current law. And, and continue to get heck, heck of a lot of money. They've got their cost back. Now it's just gravy. Uh, we should let them get a decent return, but I'm not sure the patient or the consumer or the taxpayer should be paying for the gravy. I'm speaking with Senator Bill Cassidy of Louisiana, a Republican, and I want to play for you something else that the president said. He said this last night at a campaign-style rally in Indiana. He was in the process of calling out one of your colleagues, Joe Donnelly, a Democrat in that state who's up for re-election, and he mentioned Obamacare broadly in Cut 36. Here's what the president said, and I want to follow up with a question for you. He voted yes for failed Obamacare. 
And we're doing everything to keep those premiums down. But it's a failed experiment, Obamacare. But wait till you see the plans we co have coming out literally over the next four weeks. We have great health care plans coming out, but we got rid of the individual mandate. Okay, so, Senator, you were in the thick of the fight over Obamacare replacement late last year. It didn't end up passing the Senate. You were in the crosshairs of a lot of people. Jimmy Kimmel was taking pot shots at you, calling you a liar, all that sort of stuff. But you and Senator Graham in particular tried to push a replacement bill that did not end up getting to 50 plus one votes. But here we have the president saying we've got more plans coming. We got rid of the individual mandate. Uh, I'm all for getting rid of that individual mandate because I think it's coercive and probably unconstitutional, despite what John Roberts decided. But if you get rid of that, you could sort of exacerbate the problem of rising costs by poisoning the risk pool even further. How do you now as Republicans, how do you deal with this new situation on the ground where the individual mandate is gone, Obamacare, the other regulations are still in place? And is there any actual political appetite to tackle this problem in an election year? So I don't know if I'll put it this way. I am more than happy to tackle it. Anything we can do to lower health care costs for the average American, I'm all for. But, uh, but let's just go to the individual mandate. Turns out that does not increase enrollment. And who said that? Jonathan Gruber, who was the so-called architect of Obamacare. And so... Uh, so it turns out that the biggest influence of whether or not health care people buy insurance is the cost of the insurance. Makes right. total sense. So under Obamacare, as the cost has gone up 20 percent per year, people who are healthier have been dropping it. We've been putting together proposals which would allow somebody to uh, have a cheaper access, even if they're not getting a subsidy, would lower the cost of insurance. That would make it more attractive. I'll go back to how I started. Those bills were called Alexander Murray, and Collins, Nilsen, and Murray voted against the legislation that they helped negotiate. So Republicans are serious about it. Unfortunately, I do not think that Democrats are. Well, Senator Bill Cassidy, this is a complicated issue. It's one that's not going away. We'd love to have you back on health care and other topics moving forward. But in the meantime, thanks for being here on this Friday, and enjoy your weekend. Hey, thanks for having me. Enjoy the conversation. Absolutely. Back with more Benson and Harf after this.